Okay, this is uh, Site 360, Drug Use and Abuse. Uh, this is Section 44. Um, it is an online class. Uh, this is Fall two, 2020. Uh, I am Dr. Bruce, Bruce Bradway, uh, and I will be teaching, I will be instructor for the class. Um, since this is online, I'm not in Salie. I'm not even in Arizona. Uh, I live in Lost Nation, Iowa, as you can see from my office location. This is my cell phone number. Um, right now, I'm having problems with my with my cell phone, so you need to uh, you need to be careful about using my my cell phone. If you really want to get a hold of me, the best way to do it is by sending me an email. I read my email two or three times a day, potentially. I'll probably read it more frequently since uh, I am uh, I'm not on campus. Uh, when I was in Salie, I, I spent uh, almost all my time uh, in my office until I, I would get there at 8.30 in the morning and I would leave about uh, five or six uh, every evening. Um, so. I was available for consultation a lot. Uh, I didn't get a lot of students that wanted to talk to me, however. Uh, but I will be holding office hours four days a week, uh, two hours a day. As you can see, we will do it by Zoom. I will send you the, uh, the number. And uh, on Mondays, I will be available from 8 to 10 year mountain time, uh, from 4 to 6 on Tuesday, from 4 to 6 on Wednesday, and then Thursday 8 to 10 again. However, if these times don't fit with uh, with your own schedule, then don't hesitate to, to call me uh, or don't hesitate to email me and, and I will arrange something else uh, for our meeting, our Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> this is one of the advanced uh, 300 level classes, uh, drug use and abuse. Uh, the required text is Anaba and Cohen. Uh, this is a text that I, I started using in uh, uh, Montana when I was teaching at Salish Koopman College. Uh, Uppers, downers, and all arounders is the uh, is the textbook they that they use for uh, their uh, drug counseling class. Uh, it's a little bit complex, but uh, we should be able to get through it. Okay. Uh, so, so there we go. <clears throat> so how do you pass the class? Uh, mm, mm, there we go. There are, strangely enough, there's 10 chapters in the book. Uh, each ch chapter starts with page one. So it's not like it's an accumulative uh, page number system. So I don't think I put my page numbers up here. I don't think I did. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Uh, there are actually only nine chapters that we're going to be dealing with. Then the last chapter has to do with psychoactive uh, medications, the drugs that uh, that potentially you will be finding out about uh, when you uh, when you become a counselor. Uh, Prozac, uh, any of the psychoactive substances, we'll be talking about those. So, there are 10 chapter tests. Each test is worth 20 points for a total of 200 points. Um, so you need to take the chapter tests. Uh, you also need to write a paper, and the paper can be on any uh, drug, uh, anything that we talk about in class. And of course, we're talking about all the drugs. We're talking about uppers, downers, and all-arounders, uh, hallucinogens, uh, we talk about peyote uh, to some extent. Talk about marijuana. We'll talk about uh, a lot of. Uh, we'll talk about alcohol as it has its own chapter, of course. Uh, opiates have their own chapter. Uh, so whatever you're interested in, whatever you find fascinating, uh, then that's what you need to write your paper on. You can write it over a medication, uh, like Prozac or whatever. Or any of the, the uh, antipsychotics or anxiolytics or sleeping pills, if you want. I had a uh, student in Montana who was addicted to um, Ambien, as weird as that may sound. 
uh, Ambien has an interesting side effect. She couldn't sleep without it, and she was taking more and more and more. Uh, and eventually, of course, the, the doctor stopped giving it to her, so she started trying to score Ambien, as weird as that sounds. Because uh, it just puts you, it just knocks you out. Um, and then also for each chapter, I want you to, uh, to find an article dealing with whatever that topic is. Uh, the first chapter is a little strange, but uh, when we start talking about alcohol and marijuana and opiates and uh, uppers and downers, uh, all the hallucinogens, then it will be easy to figure out what, uh, what drug you need to talk about in class. And there's an explanation as to what I'm looking for when I'm talking about an article critique. Uh, there's, the, there's a possibility that these things are changing all the time. Well, of course, that everything's changing all the time. Look at the coronavirus. Coronavirus has been around forever. We, did, we started identifying it in the 1970s. And now we have a, a form, a muta mutated form of coronavirus that is sweeping the world and killing off um, uh, tens of uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Over 170,000 Americans have died from coronavirus and I think our first, first death was in March, if I'm not mistaken. So in a little more than seven months we've lost 170,000 people uh, to the coronavirus. Uh, of course, the uh, flu of uh, 1918 was uh, a little bit worse. It was lost over 600,000 Americans. Uh, there were uh, as many as 10 million people died of the flu. And it looks like this one is only going to, well, we don't know because we don't know how long it's going to last. One of the problems with, uh, we had with the, uh, the flu uh, the 1918 flu was the fact that uh, it lasted uh, continuously uh, with fewer or more or more um, cases. It lasted for uh, over two years. So if we had the same problem with this one, with the coronavirus, uh, that's going to be really sad and, and, and uh, we'll lose a lot more people. Anyway. Uh, the rest of this talks about how to do them. Uh, we need to, to uh, uh, we've turned in 10 article critiques, as you can see. And that is it. And there's my name. Okay. Okay. And uh, Dr. Lund hasn't signed my, my uh, syllabi yet. It's over. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get started on the chapter Pharmacology of Addiction, Chapter One. Oh boy, here we go. We're going to get started. Um, yo, know, that's me. I'm the, I'm here. Um, the debate uh, about drugs uh, at present. There is a debate going on over the legalization of marijuana. Um, it is now legal in at least 11 states. Um, it's kind of hard to keep count uh, at the turn of the year. At the beginning of the year, uh, Illinois legalized marijuana. Uh, the other states are mostly in the West, uh, California, uh, Oregon, and uh, Washington. Uh, Colorado has legalized marijuana. Alaska has legalized marijuana. Massachusetts has legalized marijuana. I think Maine has as well. Anyway, there's there's about 11 states. 20 states uh, have uh, legal medical marijuana. So, and those both uh, New Mexico and Arizona are uh, have legal uh, medical marijuana. Uh, currently, the drug that seems to be causing the most serious problems is crystal meth and opiates and opioids. Uh, opiates are drugs that are that come from the opium poppy opioids are synthetic opiates and oxycontin and hydrocodone are both uh, opioids not only are we having trouble with uh, these drugs in, the, in North America but uh, it's causing a crisis 
in Europe and Asia as well. And of course, this uh, the lady on the left, the ladies on the left, are individuals who started uh, using uh, crystal meth, and as you can see, it ages you fairly rapidly. Um, from a fairly attractive individual to somebody that uh, is uh, right out of a horror movie. Uh, she's a fairly attractive young lady, and then, of course, her, she's all messed up. And as you can see, this lady aged just amazingly fast. I think that was like 18 months later. The most serious problem in the United States at present seems to be the use of prescription drugs. Uh, the last election, of course, uh, they talked about uh, prescription drugs, and uh, both candidates said that they knew how to, to solve the problem. Well, it, uh, Trump is president, and he hasn't solved the problem. I don't know if, uh, if uh, Secretary Clinton could have solved the problem either, but uh, at this point, uh, nobody seems to be doing anything about it. Um, the prescription drugs are especially a problem with, uh, with teenagers. The biggest killer among all the addictions is smoking of tobacco. Uh, when I was, um, <clears throat> I was born in 1949 and uh, I've, I've, for some unknown reason, I've, I've always been fascinated with why people die. <clears throat> looking at obituaries. I was trying to figure out how long I would live, I think. Uh, my parents, uh, uh, well, my parents were, when I was born, my parents were in their 30s, um, and I wanted to, I wanted them to stay alive, of course, but uh, I wanted to, I, I was curious about how long I, I should probably live. So the life expectancy when I was born uh, in 1949 and into the 50s, I uh, was in the 50s, they, uh, 50, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and the reason was because so many people smoked. This was right after World War II, and a lot of soldiers coming back from, uh, from the Pacific and from Germany uh, smoked um, during Vietnam. Uh, K-rations had, uh, had uh, tobacco, uh, they had cigarettes in them. So if you didn't smoke, you could trade your <laughs> you could trade your cigarettes for just about anything. Uh, they'd only had five cigarettes, if I remember the packages correctly. States are increasing the limits uh, to public smoking now, of course, because so many people are dying uh, of, of tobacco. It's still a big killer. Uh, people get COPD. Uh, it's not the smartest thing to do. Uh, is smoke. Smoke, uh, no matter what it is you're smoking, whether it's whether it's marijuana or tobacco or pipes or, or cigars or cigarettes, all of them are destructive. Uh, vaping, um, we found out that vaping uh, causes a lot of problems, uh, and it's just as destructive as tobacco. Uh, the use of performance-enhancing drugs in sports has been an issue since the uh, home run race between Mark McGuire and and Sammy Sosa, 1999. You guys don't remember this. You're not old enough to, to remember the uh, uh, the home run derby that these guys were put on every, just about every day. Uh, McGuire won. Sosa was not very far behind. He's only a couple home runs behind him. Uh, and of course, eventually Barry Bonds broke both of their records. So uh, Barry Bonds came and 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 cracked that. Uh, that record, but the, the potentially he was um, uh, using uh, performance enhancing drugs as well. Before we had steroids, before people were really into steroids, uh, they were using uh, stimulants uh, at baseball games, uh, black crosses and greenies and whatnot. Uh, so they were they were already stimulated and. People argue, my goodness gracious, we can't count this as uh, they use performance-enhancing drugs. Well, the reality is we've always used performance-enhancing drugs. Uh, and we're going to talk about this in Chapter 7, I think. It is accepted that steroids can cause damage. We know that they can. Uh, but new generations of performance enhancers have hit the sports scene uh, that do questionable damage and are undetectable through drug uh, testing. Um, four or five years ago, 
who was it? Uh, the guy from the Brewers won the uh, MVP, and uh, the right after he he uh, was named MVP, they discovered that he was on uh, human growth hormone. Uh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, it was uh, one of the Brewers. As exciting as that is, there has been a, an immense growth of computer games, cell phone usage, and other online problems, especially pornography. Like half of of uh, people that go onto the uh, internet uh, are looking at pornography. As weird as all that sounds, it uh, makes more money than than anything else on the internet. Pornography. That's strange. That seems. With the increase of technology, psychologists have been behind the addiction power curve and identifying problems that people are having. Uh, now that now with all the lockdowns, uh, with all the shelter in place, a lot of individuals are spending their time either binge watching television shows or <laughs> or uh, watching pornography uh, or playing video games. And we're not exactly sure what that's what that is going to entail. Um, my grandson is eight years old, uh, and uh, he spent the summer down in Florida with his father. Um, and his father isn't much of a babysitter, so rather than him watch the kid, uh, he just let him play video games all the time. Uh, so he came back a little bit pudgy. Uh, normally, he's a fairly active kid. Uh, this this uh, past weekend, he had a soccer tournament. And here are all these kids out there, all these eight and nine and ten year old kids are out there playing soccer. And uh, a lot of walking was taking place because a lot of these kids, uh, they haven't done anything all summer. Uh, the, the odd thing was that uh, when something would happen, when something good would happen, they would all walk around and, and do a dance that evidently is, is uh, a dance they do uh, on Fortnite. Uh, the video game Fortnite. Evidently, dancing is part of Fortnite. I thought Fortnite had to do with shooting people. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, a lot of flapping of their, their hands and holding their elbows in against their side and moving their arms. I'm not sure what that has to do with ty the Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, dance or whatever. Uh, but it was it was really kind of weird. I mean, all the the uh, parents uh, uh, were on sitting on the sidelines watching what was going on, and nobody could figure out why they were acting so strange. Anyway, uh, this is and this is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, DSM five has just come out. Uh, we won't go to the DSM six for a while, uh, but I can assure you that uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't handle the uh, uh, addictions very well in, in that uh, in that uh, manual. Early man saw his world as mysterious and dangerous, and they had a basic need to cope with his environment. Uh, early man discovered that by ingesting certain plants, they could ease their fear and anxiety, reduce their pain, uh, treat some illnesses give them pleasure and assist them to talk with their gods. And this is something early man discovered. The human brain responds to psychoactive substances. Uh, when people suffer from mental illnesses or behavioral addictions, the altered state of consciousness makes the individual feel better. Psychoactive substances make the individual feel better. Otherwise, they, of course, would not use them voluntarily. Governments, ruling classes, and religious entities have sought to control the supply of drugs through growing, manufacturing, distribution, taxing, and pro prohibition. Uh, this is something that, we, that uh, we saw in the old world. We also saw it in the new world. Uh, the people that controlled, uh, controlled the governments, the Inca, the, the uh, Aztecs, uh, these individuals used drugs of one kind or another. Uh, it was uh, chocolate, uh, and then it was also coca leaves uh, in South America and Central America, uh, and uh, the Olmecs and Toltecs. Uh, these individuals, uh, their ruling classes were controlling 
the poorer classes by uh, distributing the drugs. Ancient Sumerian uh, medicine men used opium as a secret medicine. Sorry about the penis there. Real sorry about that penis. <laughs> The pharaohs of ancient Egypt uh, would dole out beer to keep their laborers building pyramids. Uh, coca leaves were controlled and doled out by the Incan uh, rulers in Peru to maintain needed laborers in the country they controlled. And I've actually been to, uh, to Peru and I've uh, walked the Inca Trail to some extent, uh, to a minor extent. I didn't walk the whole thing, certainly. Uh, they carved it, uh, and they, they would carve huge stones, uh, and I'm not sure how they moved them, of course, but uh, they would carve these amazing stones and whatnot. And so the whole Incan Empire is built on, on the, this, uh, it's not, I, who knows if it was slave labor or not, uh, we're not exactly sure why these individuals were, were doing what they were doing, but one way they were paying them was with coca leaves. After the Spanish conquered the Inca, they controlled the growing of coca leaves to increase tax revenues. Uh, the people would work themselves to death. Uh, it's, they would uh, be using the coca and uh, they'd send them, them down into the mines and of course they worked themselves to death. Uh, the American revolutionaries exported in taxed whiskey and tobacco to help finance the revolution. Uh, technology allowed addictive substances to change, improve, and strengthen potencies over the centuries. Alcohol was first distilled to heighten the potency in Arabia in the 10th century. Now, the interesting thing is that despite the fact that uh, this was done in uh, in Arabia, which is now Saudi Arabia. Of course, uh, alcohol is is uh, taboo to the uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is right here. <laughs> That's Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's it's taboo in the Muslim countries, so they don't drink alcohol at all. But they're the ones that actually invented distilling alcohol. Morphine was first refined from opium in Germany in 1804. Cocaine was first refined from coca leaves in Germany in 1859. Uh, this is where all the pharmaceutical companies uh, came from. Bayer, um, you probably have heard of Bayer aspirin. Well, Bayer is the, was the primary um, pharmaceutical company in Germany, and they were experimenting with all these drugs. An automatic uh, cigarette rolling machine was invented in the United States in 1881. Leave it up to the Americans. Uh, the stimulant amphetamine was first synthesized in Germany in 1887 to replace ephedra. Uh, it was synthesized in Japan in 1919. LSD was first synthesized in Switzerland in 1938. Uh, this guy's name is Hoffman. This is what he looks like today. In 1938, of course, he was a very, very young scientist, and I have a picture of him. When we talk about LSD, I got a picture of him when he was much younger. Uh, since Amelia, uh, growing techniques were first used in the United States to increase the THC level of marijuana in the 1960s. Uh, the THC content of marijuana today, and this is one of the reasons why uh, I think it's a little strange to let people vote. Uh, a lot of the old hippies, uh, a lot of the old people that uh, haven't uh, picked up a a doobie in, in uh, two or three decades, these people are, are voting to uh, make marijuana legal, but they don't know how powerful this stuff is. It's 14 times stronger than it was in the 1970s. And of course, in the 1970s when it was when it was the most popular. Uh, so you got a lot of old, old tokers out there who haven't really smoked in a long time who think it's the same thing, but it's not the same thing at all. It's much, much stronger, 14 times stronger than it used to be. Uh, so we are legalizing marijuana in uh, because of our uh, ignorance. Uh, people just don't understand what's going on. Uh, the amphetamine molecule was first modified to produce designer drugs such as MDMA in the United States in 1910. There you go. The United States has at least done something. Uh, 
uh, faster and more efficient methods of putting drugs into the body was intensified has intensified the effects. Oh, sorry, that's nudity. There's nudity on the next picture. It's a, it's a painting, so don't get too excited. Uh, this is how they dressed in the in Sumeria. Sumeria is uh, right next to where Israel is today. Uh, in 4000 BC, Sumerians uh, mixed opium with alcohol to produce a stronger effect. Uh, it was discovered that the absorptive effects of coca leaves uh, could be intensified if the leaf was mixed with charred oyster shells in Peru in 1450. And of course, that's before Columbus sailed his ocean, the ocean blue in 1492. In England in 1800, aficionados discovered they, uh, that they felt giddy, high, giddy and high from inhaling nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, of course, is laughing gas. It also made them belligerent to some extent. Uh, 1900, Europeans discovered that if they snorted cocaine, they would absorb the drug more quickly uh, in the nasal passages. Uh, it can cause a problem. Uh, it is a vasoconstrictor, and uh, once the cocaine uh, effect goes away, uh, it can cause uh, uh, hemorrhaging in your nose, and we see that from time to time. Um, it was... Cocaine was real popular when I was working in, uh, in Omaha, and one of the things that we uh, dealt with was cauterizing all these bleeding nostril uh, hemorrhages in, in people's noses. In the United States, users discovered they could intensify the high of crack cocaine by smoking the rocks in 1970s. Uh, within the last decade, users have discovered that they could get a bigger rush from select time-release pain relievers such as OxyContin and Hydrocodone uh, by crushing the tablet and injecting them directly into the bloodstream. Over 4,000 plants have been identified as yielding psychoactive substances. 60 of these have been uh, in continuous use somewhere in the world throughout history. Uh, opium poppies, marijuana tops, co coca leaves, tea leaves, beetle nuts, uh, cot leaves, coffee beans, tobacco leaves, and fruits and other plants that can be manufactured into alcohol. Of course, we're going to talk about these all individually uh, as we go through the text. There is evidence that select groups of Neanderthal in Europe use fly agaric mushrooms uh, to produce hallucinogenic effects for shamanistic rituals. And of course, that's an answer to a question on your quiz uh, dealing with this chapter. Indeed, the first cultures uh, considered alcoholic beverages, especially wine, as a gift from the gods. Uh, the gods that were the gods of wine in Egypt, it was Osiris. Uh, in Greece, it was Dionysus. In Rome, it was Bacchus. The Bible has 150 references to alcohol. Most of them are warnings against using it. But, uh, of course, that didn't stop people, even religious people, from... Uh, getting drunk and acting goofy. Opium has been cultivated in the civilized world for over 6,000 years. In ancient Egypt, 5,000 years ago, opium was used to treat mental illness and to quiet crying babies. Yeah, that sounds great, like a great idea. Get your baby stoned so they stop crying. Cannabis sativa has been grown as hemp for thousands of years. The plant has been used mainly for its fiber and manufacturing rope, but also for its medicinal and hallucinogenic properties. And that's what marijuana looks like when it grows, when you let it grow. Uh, mescal beans, peyote cacti, and psychedelic mushrooms have been used for their hallucinogenic properties for thousands of years. Uh, mostly used by shaman for visions, uh, these drugs have been used in both North and South America. Psilocyba mushrooms uh, was preferred by the Aztecs in Mayan cultures. Uh, of the 30,000 species of mushrooms in North and South America, only 80 produced the hallucinogens, uh, psilocybin, and psilocin. I was watching 60 Minutes tonight, and they were talking about uh, treating people for depression with uh, psilocybin. Uh, 
as strange as that may seem. So that seems to be a new treatment that is coming out, uh, dealing with um, uh, anxiety, uh, heavy anxiety and uh, depression. Tobacco cultivation in use dates back 7,000 years in North America. Looking at the substance from survival point of view, its strong alkaloid properties not only made it noxious to herbivores, uh, deer and whatnot, that wanted to eat the plant, uh, but it gave the properties that the humans are seeking. It's the alkaline, the alkaloid properties that, that uh, make it destructive, and that's what was uh, giving them, uh, the individuals, the high. Archaeological evidence from South America shows that coca leaves have been prized by the indigenous people there for at least 5,000 years. Evidence seems to indicate that they gave it to the dying to ease their journey into the afterlife. Other drugs used by the ancients included uh, members of the nightshade family, Solanacea, uh, which contains the chemical atropine and scopolamine. Uh, during the Dark Ages, uh, people uh, who used these drugs were accused of witchcraft, uh, the medicinal pro uh, qualities being ascribed to demonic possession or collusion. Uh, if you, th there's a reason why witches are shown uh, flying on broomsticks. Uh, broomsticks used to be made out of da 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 <laughs> bushes uh, of the nightshade family. Okay, so <clears throat> let's assume that we have a young lady, or well, we have an older lady, a crone, uh, who is riding around on a broomstick. Uh, if she doesn't have any underwear on, then her, her vaginal area and her anus, uh, the skin of her vaginal area and her anus are pressed right up against the, uh, the stick uh, that she is riding on. And of course, this theoretically gave her uh, a, a high that uh, was induced by the devil. And uh, then she would be, of course, become known as a witch because she uh, would straddle the, the uh, broomstick made out of uh, the, a bush of the nightshade family. And of course, it's got the chemicals atropine and scopolamine, and that would uh, give her a, uh, it's actually a stimulant. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Detura, uh, also known as thorn apple, is sometimes made into a salve and absorbed through the skin. That's what it looks like. It actually grows, I've seen this stuff, it's, it actually grows wild in North America. Uh, henbane has been used as far back as ancient Egypt, 3,500 years ago. It was used as a painkiller and a poison. In ceremonies, it was used to induce insanity, which in turn produced hallucinations that resulted in prophecies. Belladonna, beautiful woman, is also known as witch's berry and devil's herb. This drug dilates the pupils, inebriates the user, and can cause hallucinations and delirium. As you can see, uh, belladonna uh, is the amaryllis uh, flower. Uh, so potentially, if you use this drug, they would put, they would uh, take uh, drops of uh, of belladonna and they'd put it in their eyes and make their eyes uh, dilate. And the reason they would do this is because men thought that they were attracted to them uh, if their eyes were dilated. So they would dilate their eyes for everybody. And of course, everybody, everybody would fall in love with them because they thought they were so attractive with their dilated eyes. Beautiful woman, Belladonna. Uh, the mandrake is also known as mandra mandragoria, mandragora. Uh, the root of the plant often grows in the shape of a man and was uh, used in ancient Greece to make prophecies. The drug causes hallucinations and delirium. In the 15th century Italy, it was used as an aphrodisiac. In other words, it made uh, people want to have sex. One of the stranger psychoactive drugs is ergot, a uh, brownish purple fungus that causes cereal grain rust especially on rye, but also on wheat, barley, and triticale. Uh, the active ingredient in ergot that causes the problem is lysergic acid diethylamide, also known as LSD. Outbreaks of ergot in Europe in rye growing areas have caused widespread insanity and death. Uh, 
one outbreak in France in 944 AD is reputed to have killed 40,000 people. The first written use of caffeine came from with the Olmecs in 3,500 3, years ago who used uh, coca or chocolate to produce a stimulate, uh, stimulating but bitter drink. Of course, they hadn't mixed it with sugar yet to make milk chocolate or chocolate, chocolate, hot chocolate. Uh, tea was cultivated 1,700 years ago in China and has been used in Eastern Asia ever since. Coffee was first cultivated about 1,200 years ago in Arabia. The invasion of the Americas by the Europeans opened up new markets for psychoactive substances as the a European and American people traded their addictive substances back and forth. So yes, we brought you alcohol, but doggone it, you gave us tobacco and coke and uh, coca, uh, cocoa more, you know, the chocolate, I guess. Uh, coffee, alcohol, and tea were brought to the Americas, and coca and uh, tobacco were taken back to the Europeans, to Europe. R ritualized use of stimulants became part of each culture. If you've ever been to England, which don't well, could have been to England. Uh, the English four time four. Excuse me. Four o'clock in the afternoon is tea time in England. Everything stops. Everybody takes a tea break uh, for fifteen minutes to thirty minutes. They drink tea and they eat biscuits, and that is what they do at four o'clock every every day. Tea time. Opium came back to Europe in the form of a medication known as Theriac, but which uh, saw opium mixed with from 70 to 100 other medications. <clears throat> Sorry, I needed a drink. <clears throat> Eventually in the 16th century, a stronger version of opium began to be used as a, t as a tincture of opium uh, became quite popular. Uh, tincture is uh, is something is opium in this case is tincture of opium so it's mixed it's opium mixed with alcohol anything that is a tincture uh, is mixed with alcohol uh, this substance a tincture of opium is n known as laudanum and uh, was used for everything from sl a sleep inducer to a painkiller to a treatment of for alcoholism even though it's got alcohol in it as weird as that sounds. In the early 1600s, a new drink was invented in Holland. Uh, the new drink was gin because of the contamination of the water supply of Europe. Only alcoholic beverages could be drunk with impunity. Uh, if you've ever been to, to Europe, even today, their, their rivers are used as sewers. Uh, so you really can't drink the water anywhere in Europe except maybe up in the Alps. The, the, uh, the rivers haven't been contaminated yet. Uh, this new drink was flavorful. It was easy to make and inexpensive. Uh, it became the drink of choice among uh, the poor in, uh, in uh, England. It was actually uh, invented by monks in, in Holland. And of course, uh, it was cheap, it was easy to make, and uh, a lot of people drank it. Quickly, alcoholism rates uh, and mortality due to drinking skyrocketed in the back alleys of London. Uh, England's growing population stopped growing due to, to, to the deaths. Uh, attempts to regulate gin production and, and distribution led to riots. Uh, production rates septupled. Septupled means it was multiplied times seven. Uh, finally, in 1751, new laws were passed on gin consumption return to a less deadly level. As you can see, this lady is she was trying to breastfeed her little boy, and uh, because she's drunk, uh, the baby fell off the uh, steps and probably died. There's a man uh, right here. This guy is dying of alcoholism, wasting away. Uh, here's a man eating, a, chewing on a bone. Uh, she's dying of... It's really a pretty picture, isn't it? Uh, this building's falling down, the chimney's falling off and killing people. Really sad, sad time in England. 
Still control of psychoactive drug use was sporadic throughout the world. Nitrous oxide laughing gas inhaling parties were not uncommon in Victorian England, uh, though the practice uh, sometimes resulted in more fighting than laughing, of course, because people would say anything. Uh, is it true what they were saying? Uh, do uh, drunks uh, not know how to lie? Uh, that is a, a myth that I heard, ha that I've heard many times, uh, that uh, drunks can't lie. I hope they do, because I, uh, I had a wife who uh, would call me all kinds of horrible names when she was inebriated. The rest of the time she liked me okay, I guess. But uh, when she was drunk, boy, I was all kind of, all shades of an a, uh, of an asshole. So I hope I, I hope it's not true. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not a very nice person. Morphine was uh, about ten times as potent as opium. Morphine was used during the Crimean and Civil Wars to treat the wounded casualties. Many men became addicted to the painkiller after these wars. Opium became dangerous to life and limb with the development of morphine. But then it got worse. Of course it gets worse. 19, 1855, the hypodermic needle was invented, making it possible to inject the morphine. In 1874, morphine was synthesized into diacetyl morphine or heroin. Hero, heroin was two and sometimes five times stronger than morphine. So here we have a morphine that's ten times stronger than opium. And we have heroin that's two to five times stronger than morphine. So let's go ahead and take the heroin. Maybe it'll kill us. Opium became involved in one of the oddest events in the history of the psych of psychoactive substances. The British were addicted to the caffeine and tea, but the Chinese demanded silver bullion uh, to buy it. And of course, tea only grew in China. Uh, the British had no co commodity that the Chinese wanted, and the Chinese... Uh, they couldn't get the Chinese to buy anything with their silver. No matter what it was, the Chinese thought that they had everything that they needed. So they didn't have enough silver to buy their tea. Uh, the Chinese had eradicated opium smoking from their country in around uh, 1000 AD. In 1839, the British battled the Chinese to open their ports to the opium trade. They were fighting them to make them take this psychoactive substance. The Chinese lost the war in 1842 uh, and of course it opened ports up to the English so that they could trade their opium for tea. A second opium war was fought uh, from 1856 to 1860 to open more Chinese markets for the trade. The Chinese lost again. Uh, trade went from 15 tons in, in 1800 to 2.5 million tons by the turn of the 20th century. The British had cheap tea and the Chinese had an, an addiction. The China, of course, opium didn't, wasn't being grown in China, it was being grown in India by the Brits. Uh, so a lot of the wealthy families of England, uh, some of the royal families of England, uh, were actually drug smugglers, and, or not smugglers, of course, but they, uh, they were opium dealers. Uh, and, of course, they forced the Chinese to open more and more ports. As you can see, the difference between 15 tons and 2.5 million tons is quite extensive. Anyway, that, that's really kind of sad. In 1859, cocaine was uh, synthesized from the coca leaf. It quickly became a new medicine. It was used as a topical anesthetic and used for eye surgery. It was mixed with wine to make a new, stronger concoction. Uh, it was uh, used by Freud to uh, control asthma, gastric problems, and as an aphrodisiac and to relieve depression. Uh, he did use it himself uh, at uh, a juncture. He eventually got off of it and said it was, it was wonderful while he was taking it, but he realized that he wasn't himself, so he was able to wean himself off of cocaine. Uh, a lot of people tr make fun of Freud because, or, or they denigrate Freud for using cocaine. But of course, it wasn't a, a, an illegal substance at the time. He wasn't taking an illegal drug. He was just taking a drug, just like any pharmaceutical. Um, 
he used it for a number of years, uh, and when I say number of years, two or three years, uh, he wasn't a cocaine addict all of his life, no matter what people tell you. Uh, he did use cocaine, but he didn't use it for very long. During the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, many patented medicines were manufactured with what would become illegal drugs, opium, cocaine, and whatnot. Uh, opium was real popular because it knocked you out. Cocaine actually gave you energy. Uh, so the energy drinks, uh, instead of having caffeine in them at the time, uh, they had cocaine in them, including Coca-Cola. The Coca of uh, Coca-Cola is it stands for cocaine. And the strange thing is, cocaine, Coca-Cola still has cocaine extract in it. It doesn't have any, uh, in, in order to give you energy, uh, they, they don't put cocaine in it anymore. They put caffeine in it. Uh, initially, the, uh, the initial recipe for uh, Coca-Cola had five milligrams of cocaine. But, of course, uh, in the turn of the 20th century, they took it out and started putting co uh, caffeine in the, uh, uh, in the Coca-Cola. Why don't we stop right here? Uh, I'll, I'll do another lecture, a second lecture. I'm kind of tired. It's, uh, it's Sunday night. Uh, I'm a little bit behind. Uh, so I will start right here with uh, all these lovely women uh, telling us not to, not to get drunk. Uh, so there you go. Um, I'll talk to you, uh, talk to you later this week, I, I think. I hope I will, anyway. So that's the first lesson.